Welcome to Overanalyzing Vlogs, where I think too much about something. Or do I? The British government has said that they want to scrap the Human Rights Act and possibly replace it with a British Bill of Rights. The idea is that when a British citizen thinks that the law has violated their human rights, British courts should have the final say in that not the European Court of Human Rights. If somebody thinks that the government has violated their rights, then that should be an internal matter to Britain. Now, a cynical person might suggest that the government is saying this in order to pander to increasingly loud Eurosceptics like UKIP, or to ride a wave of nationalism that helped get them elected, or because our broken electoral system gradually pushes politics further towards the right wing, or just because the British government is butthurt because they keep losing in the European Court of Human Rights. But we don't need to worry about any of that. What you and I need to talk about is, is this a good idea? Should we scrap the Human Rights Act? Now, funnily enough, the philosophy of law has already had a discussion very similar to this one. Jeremy Waldron and Richard Fallon recently produced two quite influential papers on judicial review, which is the power of some courts in America to strike down laws if they contravene people's human rights. Basically, they were asking the same question we are. If there's a disagreement about whether the law has violated somebody's human rights, who should have the authority to make the final say? Is it an elected government? or is it an unelected court? In actual fact, European court judges are elected by the Parliamentary Assembly of the Council of Europe, in which Britain has more delegates than most other countries. So the EU court is elected, and Britain has a frankly disproportionately large say in that, much bigger than the size of our population would lead you to expect. So this idea that foreign courts are imposing their powers on Britain has kind of been oversimplified in the media. And also, it's important to remember that European judges aren't bursting into British courtrooms going, No, ne vous ne pouvez pas le faire! British citizens are going to the European courts if they feel their rights have been violated, having already gone through the British court system. And they don't always win, either. Sometimes the European court says, no, you know what, you're wrong, the government is correct, and your individual rights haven't been violated. But let's just assume, for the sake of argument, that the EU court is an unelected one, and it is imposing its powers on Britain. I mean, at the very least, it's not as elected as a British parliament is, right? We don't have as much say in it as that. Well, Jeremy Waldron, says that an elected body should have the final say when it comes to deciding whether the law has violated somebody's human rights. He says that an elected body is more legitimate than an unelected one. If somebody asks us why should the elected government get to make these decisions, we can tell them a story about equal representation and everybody having a fair vote, including them, and that's a story that we can't tell if they were to ask us why should an unelected court be involved in making this decision. And those sorts of things are what people who support scrapping the Human Rights Act have to say. They say that our own parliament is more legitimate, and for reasons of sovereignty and uh, independence and uh, self-worth and, in short, the right of British people to decide what to do with themselves for themselves, Britain should be able to stand on its own two feet and should be able to make these decisions, and we don't need the EU courts to do this. These are what Waldron calls process-related reasons. They are reasons that come into play when we're deciding who should make these decisions that don't reference the outcome we want, they only reference who we think should be involved. But Richard Fallon says it's not quite that simple. He asks, well, why is an elected body more legitimate? Well, because it's directly accountable to the people, it tends to produce the outcomes that we want, which in this case is the defence and upholding of people's human rights. He says that the process-related reasons are reducible to outcome-related ones. And this is just the prologue to his deeper point, which is that an unelected court having the power to rule on human rights violations separate from the legislature could provide a safety net for people's individual rights. It helps safeguard people's human rights by providing an extra layer of protection. And for that reason, it is, in fact, legitimate. So, for instance, the European Court is who we British citizens can go to if we feel that our own government has violated our human rights. The European Court is the safety net. And in fact, they have defended the rights of British citizens in recent cases against the government. Now, if you're very clever, you might be thinking, okay, well, that's cool, but 
A British Bill of Rights could presumably do the same job, right? The British Bill of Rights could be the safety net that we have, so if we scrap the Human Rights Act, we could really have the best of both worlds here. Well, unfortunately, because a British Bill of Rights would be set by the same system of politicians, there wouldn't actually be any point in having it. Part of the point of the safety net is that it provides a different point of view. So we're talking here about disagreements over whether the law has violated somebody's human rights. And different institutions and professionals will be sensitive to different reasons and points of view within that discussion. The law is already set by our elected government, and it already constitutes what the elected government thinks is a human rights violation and what they think is an acceptable law that manages to avoid it. A British Bill of Rights set by our own government would just provide the same point of view on that again, so there would be no point in having it. It would be superfluous, or at the very least, it wouldn't be better than the system we already have with the European Court. And by the way, this idea that points of view in the safety net shouldn't be superfluous is how Fallon gets around the obvious question, well, why don't we just have a million safety nets then? So Waldron said that we can't tell a story about individual rights that justifies involving an unelected court that we can tell about an elected legislature. And Fallon is saying, yes, we can. We can actually tell a bloody good story about that. So just to summarize, even if the European court was an unelected body, which it isn't, remember, there would still be a very strong argument for having it, because it provides a safety net for British citizens when we feel that our rights have been violated by our own government. And that's a safety net that we couldn't get from a British Bill of Rights. But I'm probably just reading too much into it. Who am I?